Jake Eisenberg here for the Maryland Baseball Network, joined with the leader of the pack, Maryland hitting coach Rob Vaughn. Rob, thanks for joining us. And, and I want to start with your lineup, obviously, as, as the hitting coach. Inexperienced last year, but this year, lots of depth with Kevin Smith, Nick Dunn, Marty Costas. How do you kind of handle all of those different pieces and, and put them together? The one thing I'll never complain about is having too many good hitters. <laughs> I can assure you that. Um, but it's been good, man. Like Smitty went out this summer and, and really went to work, went on a mission, came back much better, had a great summer. Um, you know, Marty's continuing to improve. Dunn is done. He's hit every time I've ever seen him play. Um, but there's been some good stuff, man. Like I think you start looking at our lineup. We've had talent the last couple of years. We've had talent in 14. We had talent in 15. We had tough kids in those those groups. But but this is arguably maybe one of the deeper lineups we've had as far as you know. There's a lot of competition going on for spots right now, and there's there's a lot of guys that deserve to be in that lineup on Friday night. And we got to sit down as a staff and pick the first nine to throw out there. Um, but there's a lot of guys that have worked hard. There's a lot of guys that are ready to go and that are performing at a pretty high level right now. Last year it was Madison Nickens who started the season at the top of the lineup, and it's looked like it's going to be Zach Jankarski to lead things off this year. What have you seen out of him uh, progressing as a hitter over you know this summer, this offseason, now coming into the spring? Jank's just one of your toughest kids. You know, I think him and Maddie are both. I think you combine them and throw them in there with Bionic. Those are some of the toughest kids I've ever coached. Um, you know, and, and Zach brings a lot to your offense. There's he's on base all the time. There's zero fear in that kid whatsoever. Um, you know, in, in we were talking with Coach Fecto the other day, and even through these inter-squad games, just the at-bats he has, sometimes they're not pretty. Sometimes you look like, what the heck was that? But he's <laughs> fouling off pitches. He's spoiling pitches. Pitcher makes a mistake, and he's got enough bat speed to bang something. Um, and he's just he's a tough out, you know, and I, I think there's something to be said. We kind of went through that last year by putting Pap at the top of the order of putting one of your toughest dudes up top and let him just – grind things out, get guys on base, and set it up for guys like Dunn and Costas and Sierra and Smitty. When you look at the team this year, you mentioned you know Zach being you know, fearless on the base paths. Last year, the team, not too many stolen bases, just 28, um, one of the lowest in the Big Ten Conference. Are there going to be more attempts to steal this year, or are you guys going to you know go back and look to bunt again like you did last year? You know, I think last year what we had in um, – is we had to get a lot of hits to score. We didn't have a whole lot of ways to score other than just hit, hit, hit. And I think when you face some of the arms we face, when you face the Cody Sedlocks, when you face the Mike Schwarns, you better have more than one way to beat them. Um, and so, you know, that's something that Papio, as a student assistant coming on staff this year, was awesome with uh, stealing bases and doing that kind of stuff through his career here. Um, and we basically gave him the base, the base stealing, base running game and said, mm -hmm. Pap, go make him good, and he's done an unbelievable job with it. You know, I, I think our guys are as aggressive, they're as confident. Um, you know, and we, we talk about it all the time, it's not always just about stealing bases. The threat of the stolen base is just as important. So you go out there and you get it out at second base when I've got Justin Morris trying to steal third base and pitchers are having to divert attention to him when Marty Casas is sitting at home plate, that becomes a pretty scary situation. Um, so, so yeah, we're going to look to push the envelope a little bit more. Um, my big thing is I've told these guys every day is I want them to play free of the fear of failure. I don't want that to creep in their head. I want them to not be afraid to crash and burn with what they're doing. They need to get out there, play hard, play fast, be aggressive, um, and force the other team to, to make some mistakes. When it comes to Marty and Kevin and, and Nick, how do you order them at the top of the lineup, and what goes into that thought process? You know, I, I think they're all three very talented hitters. You know, Dunn is – he hits balls that shouldn't be hit, and he hits them hard. You know, Marty, for a guy that's physical, for a guy that's got the power he has, also has really good plate discipline. Um, and I think that's something that – that's really important. You know, it's one thing to have the juice and to have that. You come watch Marty's BP. If you think he's going to get 10 thigh high fastballs, you're nuts, you know? Um, so he's going to have to be able to spit on the pitches that are down. He's going to have to see the breaking ball. Um, and when they make a mistake, punish it. And that's what he's been really good with. Um, and then Smitty just, he's really kind of revamped his swing a little bit. And he's got some thunder in there now. Like it's, it's pretty good, you know? And he's hit some home runs in his past year. Um, but it's been different this year, you know, and I think you take those three and obviously I think you're going to see them anywhere two through five in the lineup. Um, you know, I think we have a pretty good idea of where we're going to start things with those guys. Um, but, you know, I think you, you can pretty much flip a coin, draw them out of a hat and flip those <laughs> guys around a little bit. And what about some of the other pieces like Nick Sieri, A.J. Lee, Justin Mars, Kevin Beyond? Where do they fit into the starting nine? 
Well, Siri's hit his entire career here. You know, he had a kind of a tough start to last year, and then you saw the way he finished last year. Mm -hmm. It was on fire. He's one of the best hitters down the stretch. Um, all the dad does is hit 300. He's going to do it again this year. He'll go out and have a good year. Um, you know, I think you factor him in right in the middle of the order. I mean, he's he doesn't have as much thump as you might think, but the guy is going to hit between 310 and 340 like he like he always has. Um, you know, he's been really good. A guy like Morris has made really good strides. You know, and Jay's had a tr tremendous preseason. He was. Um, he's been very, very good. And then Biondic is just, the, like I said earlier, he's one of the <laughs> toughest dudes out there. Right. It might not be pretty. Um, there might be some things here and there that that um, that might not be the sexiest looking thing, but the guy's going to get it done. You know, he, he'll get hit by a pitch, he'll execute, he'll come up with a big two-out hit when you need it. Um, and that's just who he's been on top of just tremendous defensive play at first base. So, um, so yeah, I think you'll see those guys in all time, and A.J., like Coach talked about earlier, we went up to Alaska, had a great summer, um, and just has come back a better player. He's confident. He plays unreal defense at third base um, and can just do everything. His, the short game, he spent a lot of time working on to kind of add that to his arsenal a little bit. Um, and, and he's worked his tail off, so he's, he's ready to go. When you're standing in that third base coaching box, you know, looking at your hitters and coaching them as they're going to the plate, is the approach that you're preaching one of, you know, with aggressiveness, or is it kind of taking what the pitcher is giving to the hitter? Um, aggressive, I think, is the <laughs> best way of putting it. Um, I tell guys every day, moving barrels are dangerous. You know, you get up there and you're not ready to hit, and we're not going to take our way into stuff. We're not trying to pitch count guys. To me, the way you get guys to walk you is by having a really good playing with two strikes and competing your tail off. And when they throw something over the wide of the plate that you get your swing off. Whether you hit it or not, you got to make the pitcher uncomfortable when there's something thrown elevated over the wide of home plate. Um, and that's what guys have done a good, really good job with this this preseason is um, is I think there's obviously a fine line. We're not, we don't want to flail at everything coming at home plate, um, but we want to believe in what we're doing and know that if it's elevated out over the wide of the plate that we might not hit it, but we're going to get our swing off on it. What kinds of team goals have you set offensively for this season? Um, you know, we, we've talked a lot about quality at bats this year. Um, so that's one thing we want to preach. I think, I think sometimes you can sit here and you can start throwing numbers out. You can throw batting average out. You can throw runs scored out. And you can throw all this stuff out. Um, but what we've really tried to do is kind of take it back to a game by game thing. And just one of the things that we've preached to them is falling in love with the process of the game and letting the results kind of take care of themselves. So. You know, quality at bats, we spent a lot of time talking about if we're 55% or better, we got a really good chance to win. Um, we score seven runs a game. That sounds really dumb. Like, we should win a lot of games <laughs> if we do that. Right. Um, but that's kind of the goal those guys have set for themselves. You know, we got we got with the guys. And to me, it's, it's great if I have goals, but it's really what they want. It's what they believe in, what they think is feasible. Um, so obviously, we want to we wanna play hard. We want to play fast. We want to steal bases. We want to take ball and dirt. Um, we want to grind out at bats. But if we can be 55% with our quality of bats and score seven runs a game, we'll, we'll probably play for quite a while. The Terps get rolling with their 2017 season this Friday down in Clearwater, Florida, taking on the Ball State Cardinals. Live at 7 o'clock, you can listen in on Maryland Baseball Network. Coach Vaughn, thanks for your time. Thank you, buddy.